In this video, I'm going to explain to you why 6x6 film cameras are my favourite format of all. Now it's important to stress from the outset that this isn't about square format photography per se. This is about the 6x6 cameras that I use on a regular basis and why it's my favourite format. Now square images are something you can achieve by cropping any format. But I'm going to explain now why I have a preference for native cameras that shoot in that square format. Now that is typically medium format cameras like these that shoot 6x6. I believe there may be some 35mm cameras that do it but they are a bit of a rarity. These are mainstream cameras that everybody uses on a regular basis, even these days. Now the first reason I absolutely love using square format cameras is because they work in one orientation. I don't need to tilt the camera over to achieve the, the portrait or the landscape look. It's square is a square. So the cameras are designed to operate in one way. That is either held in your hands or plonked on a tripod and they always behave the same. The controls are always in the same position. The shutter speed, you know, the film wind on, the focusing, all of it doesn't suffer from that awful tilting of cameras. Now, digital camera users, a bit easier for you, but you film camera users will know exactly what I'm talking about. So that's the first reason I really like using this format of camera. Now, another reason is that you can crop these very easily in post-processing. Now, Ansel Adams used to shoot extensively with a Hasselblad. As soon as he got his hands on one, his use of large format diminished considerably. Now, he never really presented his images in the square format. I don't think I've actually seen any. He would typically crop either vertically or horizontally later. Now, the beauty of the square format camera is that you have left yourself that option at the time of shooting. You can make that decision later by leaving a bit of the left or the right or the top or the bottom out. If you shot in a portrait, or a landscape format, there is less flexibility later to do that cropping. Now, another thing I really appreciate about these 6x6 cameras is, for me, they've got just the right amount of frames on a roll of film. Now, these will all, all these cameras I've got here today with me, will all shoot 12 images on a roll of 120 film, a standard roll of film. So for me, 12 is about enough. When I'm shooting 35 millimeter and I have 36 frames, I can find that a bit of a push to fill sometimes and end up with half a roll shot. Now, another reason for preferring the 6x6 format uh, over maybe some of the, the odd cameras that shoot square out there, like 127 format, is the extensive choice of film. Goes without saying that 120 film is available in just about every different emulsion that's currently available today. So I don't want for anything. I've got color slide, color negative, black and white, infrared, absolutely perfect. Now, getting on to a very important point for me, and possibly one of the major reasons I like this 6x6 format, is I have a tall image and a wide image. It sounds crazy, but they're the same. Now, if you're talking about shooting a, a landscape with a wide angle lens, say 24 millimeters, then the actual angle of view is 24 millimeters on the horizontal. On the vertical, with a three by two, like your full frame digital cameras or 35 millimeter film, you've only got something like about a 36 millimeter angle of view. So it's, it's quite letterbox. So you cut off the top and bottom. Now that suits a lot of scenes. However, when you're shooting with one of these six by six cameras, the angle of view is the same horizontally and vertically. Now that has a huge advantage if you're shooting certain scenes like mountains, or you want to include some foreground because you can use a lens which is effectively the same in all directions. Now, it, it, again, it sounds obvious. It sounds like, well, yeah, clearly it is. But to achieve the look you want with a 35 millimeter full frame camera, you would need a wider lens because that wider lens would let you use the top and bottom of the frame. If you use a 24 millimeter lens on a full frame camera, you will not include the top and bottom of the frame as if you use a 24 millimeter lens on one of these cameras. It's obvious when you actually see the images and when you get used to using one of these cameras, you really do recognize scenes that benefit from that. So my widest lens for the Bronica is 23 millimeters, but that makes it extremely wide in the vertical format. I can take in a lot of foreground and a lot of the top of the mountains. You'd probably need something round about sort of 17 millimeters in full frame to get the same effect. Now, it would be remiss of me not to mention possibly uh, one of the reasons that a lot of people 
love these cameras and this format and that is the quality of the cameras that are available now i've got a selection of cameras here today with me and i'm starting with the most expensive system camera i own and that is my bronica sq sq camera now this is an sq ai the last model they made it is a full system camera everything on it is interchangeable so your lenses you can have a full range of lenses just as you would with your modern digital cameras the viewfinders come off okay you can put a, an eye level viewfinder a prism a chimney viewfinder on there and also very importantly the backs come off now i can change my film stock i've got fp4 in there i can carry multiple backs i've got five of these and i can change them over and use them as i feel okay so that gives me that that flexibility that's the quality end of the system if you want to move down to something which gives you equal quality in terms of lens performance but it's a little bit more compact a bit more traditional in many ways you can use these twin lens reflex cameras now twin lens reflex cameras were i think they were always in the square format typically six by six there are a few 127 cameras out there which are a little bit smaller format film but they're very hard to find these things like your roly flexes and your shika mats are extremely portable very robust uh, very simple to use and the nice thing is of course just like my bronica they do have a, a focusing which you can do from looking down into the finder and very very easy to use the top lens is for viewing the bottom lens is for taking so you can also put filters on here like infrared filters and it doesn't affect your your view it all works as if you know you were viewing through the lens but you're not you're viewing to this top lens here so a little bit of parallax error but a very high quality alternative to something like the Bronica. The nice thing is as well, if you shoot with the Bronica and you shoot with this, the images are on a par with each other. So you can mix and match them. Now that's not always the case if you're flipping formats. So if you use a Pentax 6.7 and then you go and use a, a Mamiya 6.45, there is a difference in the look. Uh, you know, you have to do a bit of cropping to get the same look. And also the film size obviously on the crop is different. It may not appear the same if you're doing a portfolio of work. Now moving down the scale again, if you want to go really, really portable and you want to really take advantage of small size, then you can go for folding cameras like these. Now this is a very simple Voigtlander. I use this a fair amount actually, because it goes in my back pocket. It is smaller than nearly all my 35 millimeter cameras. It is a simple zone focusing camera. You just twist the, the front element to the approximate distance. You stop it down, you know, you cock the shutter, wind it on, and you fire it very very simple and cheap as well if you can get a good one now again you could mix those images in with the other six by six cameras and they would look you know they'd have a homogeneous feel to them they would all sit well together although this lens isn't up to the same standards as the other two it's still very high quality and i really do like using it now where it gets really interesting and we're moving away now from the typical uh, sort of quality end if you like the, the sort of sharp images and the, the high contrast lenses is when we start to talk about cameras like pinhole cameras now I love these things and they're becoming increasingly popular it seems these days now a pinhole camera is just simply a, a tiny hole uh, a roll of film no lens and the image is exposed by just moving the little shutter piece of wood out the way and it exposes onto the film now these are again tiny you know robust this one's made out of a bit of teak and it's very, very pleasant little device to take out with you for the day. You need a tripod because you will be shooting in many seconds of exposure time. But that is something where the square format, the six by six format, gives you one of the advantages of pinhole. Now with pinhole, you get a little bit of vignetting coming in, a little bit of vignetting around the outsides, and that helps focus you in on the image. Now, if it wasn't square, the vignetting wouldn't appear at the top and bottom of the frame, it'd appear at the edges and wouldn't be even. With that six by six piece of film, you've not only got the right uh, effect for pinhole for me, it's really my favorite and only format I shoot pinhole in, but also there's enough quality in the film to make decent enlargements. Now I have tried very small pinhole, uh, 35 millimeter, I just didn't like it. Those soft images need the resolution of a larger film and the 120 film and the six by six format give you that extra quality. Now, finally, uh, we have the very cheap end of the spectrum and something I absolutely adore is my holder. Now I've been using these for probably about 15 years. They are very, very cheap. 
They do make a similar looking image to the pinhole camera. Now this is something I make use of. Now you may have seen some of my videos that I put out earlier this year, last year, where I would take both cameras because the nice thing is these images sit well together. Again, they share the same film, they share, they share the same format. They have a similar look, more vignetting on the Holger, blurry, but you can use this handheld. You can go out, just shoot this with a roll of HP5 plus XP2, Portra 400, all absolutely perfect. But they sit together well in a portfolio, so you can mix and match the two. This thing's wider, more depth of field. This thing's more portable, a more flexible, because you can actually focus it and make some things go out of focus. The other thing is the quality aspect of 6x6 film. Now, 6x6 for me is that sweet spot between 35mm and large format. Now, large format will give you the, the resolution, it will give you the, the lack of grain, it will give you the sharpness, massive enlargements without being able to detect any flaws within there. It's superb quality. 35mm is flexible and fast and you get lots of shots on a roll and you can hand hold it. Sometimes a little bit grainy, not perfect for landscapes at times, unless you're going for that moody black and white look I love doing. But in between, there is medium format. It's like everything, you know, it's like you know, too hot, too cold, just right. You know, too hard, too soft, just right. It's like Goldilocks zone. And the little 6x6 cameras for me hit that sweet spot. They have enough quality. They are portable enough. They're not like your Mamiya RB67s. You know, this is, this is quite a bit lighter than the big Mamiya's or the Bronica GS1s or even like the Pentax 6.7. It, it's, it's not bad at all. It's quite portable. Yet the, the image quality is, is there. Now, if you look at this image uh, I took a couple of years ago with the Bronica and the standard lens. No, it wasn't the standard lens. It was the uh, short telephoto lens and actually a 1.4 times converter, believe it or not. So, you know, a little bit of image degradation, you would think. Now, this was taken in a forest on Ektar 100 color negative film, and I sent it off for a drum scan. And the drum scan came back at about 13,000 pixels on each side, and you can crop right in, and this will make an A1 print absolutely no problem at all. Hardly any grain, very, very sharp. Beautiful image. It's getting up there to the point where you think, I don't need much more than this. Sure, the large format will give you that extra uh, tonality if you're shooting black and white and you can also crop in more and it's a little bit sharper but you know you're getting there with six by six you know if you start shooting with the likes of this Bronica there's not really much else that I would want in terms of quality it, it, it really has got most of what I want I love large format for the flexibility and all the movements etc but for quality you know I'm getting very close to maybe sort of 90% of what I need with this camera system so to wrap up, I hope I've managed to convey some of the reasons why I, I love 6x6 so much and why for me it's more than about it just being square. I love the square format. I do crop down digital images, but there is nothing like shooting natively with a 6x6 camera. Yes, you can crop your digital images, but I hopefully have explained why I like working with these. That, that, that native format, the ability to see things in the square format when you're taking it, for me, is an absolute winner. So... I hope you enjoyed this little ramble of mine. Uh, one of my, my, my the things I, I really want to talk about is my passion for photography and 6x6 is right up there at the top. If somebody put a gun to my head and told me to choose just one camera, I'd be worried, obviously, because that's not something you expect on a day-to-day -day basis. But if I was pushed and somebody said, you have got to shoot with one camera format for the rest of your life, it would be 6x6, no question about it. So there you go. And that's uh, all I've got to say for today. So thank you very much for coming along again and I'll see you soon.